Okay, this is the first part of a mini campaign for Call of Cthulhu 7th edition. Um, it's part of the San Francisco, um, well, core book for Call of Cthulhu, but um, there's a lot of stuff just made up by me in it as well. So, not everything from in there. Um, we are in the 1920s, or to be exact, in the 1920, and it's the 18th of November. And our little group here, some of them know each other already. I think one doesn't know the others. You had some business in, um, in Oakland, and it took you some time, actually, to finish it, or maybe you didn't finish it. I think you can tell us about that soon. But um, it's about 1 a.m., and it's a cold, very cold, cloudless night in November, and you're waiting on the pier for the ferry to stop finally there and let the passengers on. And it's one of those really nice steam-driven ferries, of course, and they go over, over uh, between Oakland and San Francisco the whole day, like basically every half hour they cross over. And it's a trip about two hours, probably you've already done that trip multiple times. It's not very interesting, that trip usually. You pass Goat Island until you, or it's in the middle actually, and uh, after the another the other half of the trip, you finally then end up in Oakland or San Francisco Pier. And um, yeah, this night, like I said, it's cloud. It's not cloudy, it's cold. And only a very few people are standing around. You four, of course, and only five or six others are waiting for the Stanford, which is just uh, driving onto the pier or waiting to get on. And maybe every one of you give us a short introduction and what you actually did maybe in Oakland, if it's of importance. Starting with uh, Harry, you're playing Jack Lucy, right? Yes, I am Jack Lucy. Um, some of you know me as a friendly, um, easygoing, guy who's spent most of his time on the water one way or another um, got cut up in the merchant marine during the war and now that things have settled down i've got my own little boat here operating out of north beach charter tours any water taxi anything that uh anything you need done on the water look look to me um I'm a reliable captain, and I'd be happy to uh, take your money. And actually do some shady business as well, right? Well, you know, what, what uh, you do while you're on the boat, that's your business. <laughs> of course it is. And, uh, yeah, you, you, you have You hire me that... to get you somewhere. Yeah. And you have that... I don't know if you would call him friend, but... Uh... We have Lo Hai Wong or Wong Ho, Ho La, Wong, Wong Lo Hai. <laughs> this will kill me. <laughs> Played by Morgan. <laughs> yes, he's a a, a, a okay uh, laundry man. He he does well. Um, he launders laundry from the brothels, the opium dens, and restaurants in the uh, San Francisco area, mainly catering the uh, celestial, celestial, uh, celestial. Oh God, I'm the Good. Orientals. <laughs> See how that feels. <laughs> the Orientals in that area, and uh, he sometimes have dealings with the uh, Jack, where uh, he would be like the middleman, where he would deliver certain illicit, illicit goods to the opium dens every once in a while. That's more like work for money and, and being in that area he has a lot of dealings with the underworld there. So does he have his own shop 
actually? Yes, yes, a oh. laundry shop. Okay, and uh, one question which might be important during the game, uh, do you actually have contact to the tongs? Oh yeah, of course, I have to pay them off. <laughs> nice, okay. And we have first time Call of Cthulhu player, Morgan? Uh, okay. Uh, and you were I mean, playing... I was in Delta Green and stuff, so. Oh, right, yeah. Thomas Nightingale. Okay, so tell us about the author. So Thomas is uh, a bit of uh, perhaps maybe dapper, you would call him. He likes to present himself as a little bit more than what he is. You know, he tells you his stories of his wild nights that he had back in New York City and down in Louisiana. He's kind of made his place here in San Fran, though, hopping from couch to couch. He's been known to sleep on the, the benches in the laundromat now and then. You know, he made a few friends with Low High and for Jack. Jack's probably been putting him up his room and board for a little while and trade for some uh, awesome stories that Thomas has. He's a, everybody knows he's a bit of a pathological liar on his stories and stuff. He likes to uh, present himself as much more than he is. Uh, you know, he mentions all these great friends he has, like Sinclair Lewis and such, but really he just kind of writes poetry that's pretty shitty and tries to present it as something major. Did you know Jack London? Oh, of course. That's my brother-in-law. Oh, goodness. <laughs> did he actually... He has, sorry. Yeah, the pet wolf. Did he, did he already try to get published, or is he still in his, his working process of making oh. the real deal in poetry well do you want his side of the story or the truth um well <laughs> as far as he's concerned yeah he's been published many times none of you have ever seen oh. it and oh, it's course it's over in new york city and you know it's, he's quite a big deal over there you know he, here he's just trying to uh you know, start things up a little bit so you know things are a little slow going but he'll get there in time i see okay and last but not least, we have Tom, who's playing Francis Sapsford. Is that right? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah indeed. Um, Francis is uh, an antiquary, an archaeologist, and he actually went to uh, a congress um, where recent findings in uh, Egypt were being uh, discussed. It was uh, pretty. So this night, right? So so he has been to to Berkeley, or yeah. or was that just uh, recently? Well, I'm coming back from that now. Okay, on my cool. way back. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, such congresses go a long time. So it's late at night, and you are one of the people waiting on the pier, and. Um, you don't know the others, but you see no. them probably standing together, trying to get some warmth by standing together. Because like I said, it's really, really cold. And um, the fairy is now ready to, oh, we have our fifth player, I think. So am I running up to the, uh, running up the docks, trying to get on the boat as it pulls away? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not pulling away. Carlos, are you, have you fixed your issues? Or shall I wait for your character to introduce him later? Okay, let's let's go on with the others then. So, um, that little bridge is put on the pier so you can enter uh, the ferry itself and you already see like five or six sailors standing on the side they they don't really put much effort into their work I mean there is not much effort to be put into that work but they don't look friendly they're just yeah a little bit tired a little bit annoyed they all hold, hold a little mug of coffee in their hands steaming and try to get some warmth into their bodies and they know it's the last night for the night so they're really eager to get you on board and they seem to be a little little bit happy that's only like 
10 people now waiting here and they can be gone pretty fast and they wave to the first of you to walk the, the plank <laughs> to walk over the bridge and come to the ferry and um for each of you who already knows how the ferry looks it's like a little salon in the middle where you have a roof and where you can actually get something to drink as well and um that's usually where people play some ongoing chess chess actions chess games and or play cards and such uh although you would would think this night isn't a night for chess people just want to get home and the way for you come on people we're in a hurry we're already late yeah i get on uh, i'm uh, very tempted by those coffees I'm going to wait for the other people to get on first until it's time for the colored people to get on board. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you would assume if you would go first, uh, that wouldn't make a good picture here. Yeah, you see the others, uh, clearly white people um, try to make their way on the ship at first, even before Mr. Uh, Mr. Saps forward. And uh, as if it's if it, if it's as if there is need to get a free space on that ferry. It's made for about 70 people, so there's plenty of space. And they rush for, for the coffee bar under that little roofed space. And in the end, you, you can, you're allowed to enter the ferry as well, low high. Although they, it looks almost as if they're already pulling that little bridge in. <laughs> so you really have to hurry to get on oh, as yeah, well. I'll, I'll hurry on to the boat. And I'll look I'll, at I'll you. wait up on deck for, uh, for Wong and, and smile at the, at the uh, crewman and nice job, sailor. <laughs> and uh, they look at you. They don't seem to understand what you're talking about. He, ju he then just nods as he finally pulled the bridge in, takes his coffee and walks off, not saying one single word. And soon after, only half a minute later, the ferry starts uh, again for San Francisco. And of course you see all that steam billowing up behind you and a little bit at the sides. You, you only have a good view to the front, although there is not much to see. Of course, it's completely dark here, and it's not like today that there is a lot of light, which you can see in the night at the cities. There is not much to see. But you know, like I said, on halfway, halfway the journey, about in one hour, you will pass Goat Island, and after another hour, you will be back in San Francisco. And you see the other people under the roof. They start just taking a seat. Some start actually slipping. And all of them seem to know this ride pretty well. Cool. I want to go and uh, get me a cup of coffee because it was so cold. And you get so, a cup of coffee of the shittiest coffee you've ever had in your life. This is really bad. And you assume it has been standing there on a warming plate for the whole friggin' day. Yeah, I can imagine. And it's actually pretty expensive. I'll come up to you. Hey, friend. This this will warm me up better than that coffee. I'll pull out a little flask. And offer to pour it into your cup. Well, that's a very nice gesture. Thank you, but um, I don't think I uh, partake in those particular pleasures. Suit yourself. Thanks, uh, I turned to Jack. Uh, Mormon, huh? He Mormon? 
I just shrug. Did you see the sailor who's giving out the coffee? You see him, like, inconspicuously moving his muck a little bit over the bar <laughs> in your direction. Just, huh? I wouldn't yeah, I'll, I'll give him a wink. I'll, I'll give him a wink and sort of stand over on the edge of the bar and look around, make sure it's not too conspicuous, and then tip you my don't think anybody flask would a little bit. And he looks pretty happy about that. Probably he's not allowed to drink, but of course, yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah, and he actually yeah. gives you a coffee for yourself as well, just in payment. Carlos, do you I have your you. issues fixed now? Where the hell? No, that doesn't look good. Okay. Um, just try, try on. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, what, what are the others doing? Do you want to take a seed? Or <clears throat> what's your plan here? Yeah, I'll what? take a seat near uh, Jack and and do chit chat, idle chit chat. <laughs> mm -hmm. and you see you Jack's one giving away some uh, free drinks here. I'd certainly shuffle over and give him a bit of a smile. Oh, but you don't offer alcohol, right? No, he wants to smooch some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a romancer at heart, Jack. But I'm a little chilly. Oh, Thomas. <laughs> All right. I, I can see, I can see your, your cold there. You, you really should bring a heavier coat. It's November no, no. after all. Well, I didn't think, you know, I hear these stories of back when I was in New York City of all the people being warm out here in San Fran. I didn't think I got cold out here. It just blows my mind. Mark Twain, I thought you, where you, didn't you say you were friends with Mark Twain? Mark well, Twain we, said we've the had a coldest summer I've ever spent was a winter, no, wait, the coldest winter ever spent was a summer in San Francisco? I, I don't know. You're the literary guy. Yeah, that was just a metaphor. Just a metaphor. <laughs> he was known for those. Who'd have thought he was telling the truth? All right, here, help, ha have yourself a little. I'll drink as much as until you stop me. Oh. Hey, 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 Jack, they, they say they want to build this bridge from uh, Sausalito across to San Francisco. What do you think? Well, how are they going to build it without blocking up all the shipping traffic? That's a stupid idea. Maybe they put in drawbridge, you know, like uh, London, the uh, London Bridge, a drawbridge. One traveler is sitting behind you in a nice or nicer suit. And he seems to listen in. And as soon as the one comment uh, of, um, of Jack, as soon as he heard that, he turns to, to your back, Lohai, and he says, what would you know about it? Huh? Uh, I, I, I don't know anything about that. No. Yeah, truly, I don't know why you're even allowed in this section of the boat, honestly. And he takes his newspaper, which was lying next to him, and he searches out a seat a little bit further in the back. Yeah. And this is probably how you experience your life here yeah, every day. Yeah. I, I ignore that because that happens all the time. <clears throat> Do the others react to that? Oh, see I turn around and give him a look. Mine. Yeah, it's pretty normal. Okay, Carlos, how does it look now? Really? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. Yeah, sound all right? Yes, nice. Okay, so we have another passenger uh, who was hiding maybe outside of, of that lounge area. Still I'm a little cold. bit antisocial sometimes. He's what? I'm a little bit antisocial sometimes, so I was kind of standing out, looking out on the water. 
just in my imagination. Yeah, and there wasn't my imagination much. wander. And there wasn't much to see. Of course, I don't know if you heard that already, but of course, there is not much light. Uh, the view behind you is more or less blocked by all that steam coming out from the ship, and it's engulfing everything. The 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 behind of your of your um, ship and such, so you can't see to the back, but you can only see into the darkness in the front, and you smell the seawater, but uh, nothing else for your senses here. And uh, like, I hope you heard who the others are and what they are. So give us a little introduction of your character as well. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit of a beard. I'm a little bit unkempt, and um, I'm a fiction author. And I, um, but I'm also a bookstore. So I, I do a lot of uh, mail order, um, rare books, and I do a lot of uh, research for. I do a lot of occult research just for reference for my stories to make them more authentic. And, um, and is he actually, is he published, a published author? Um, he's kind of struggling. I mean, They're I haven't made struggling. that much. He hasn't made that much money off of it. He's had some of his works published and then he's also self-published some of his stuff just to not on a very big scale, on a very small scale. Okay. He ain't this is me, fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he <laughs> needs tips from you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you the big leagues. And the others are already inside. Um, you can enter whenever you want. You see all those uh, sailors, six sailors, all in all, are wandering the ferry uh, with their coffee mugs in hand. They don't seem to interfere with the passengers at all, only if they're spoken to. And it seems to be a pretty boring ride, like always. But uh, do we see the stars? <laughs> There's no light, right? So do we see stars? Yeah, or definitely. The... Yeah, it's totally cloudless. I can't so much mass. I just can't uh. Carlos, do me a favor and mute yourself when you're not talking because you have a lot of background noise. Thank you. Sorry. Start again, Morgan. Sorry. Oh, just wondering if uh, the the steam coming out is cloudy, but you're saying we can see the see the stars. Okay. Oh, can't. Yeah, hear you. I muted myself now. Great. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the the back part of the ship is well engulfed in, st in steam if you are on the front part of the launch you can see the stars of course then you are free of steam and you can see a lot of them it's uh it's really totally cloudless cool and cloudless so a perfect night to see every single star in the sky So so I tell uh, I tell Jack uh, they say uh, the stars foretell people's future. What do you hear? What do uh, people America think about that? Uh, oh, my friend, that that's just a a load of your primitive bupkis. <laughs> stars. Don't know anything about the future. I'll tell you though, it's not too often that we can see the stars on a night like this. It's nice that the fog has stayed away and we can look up there, imagine what's up there. How do you, how do you think you read the stars? There's these uh, wise people who, 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 who know the stars and their movements and they, um, do auguries and, and they pull these sticks and they tell your fortune. 
I thought you told fortune reading tea leaves. No, those are uh, gypsies do that. Gypsies read tea leaves. Tom also kind of uh, reaches his back pocket and pull out the newspaper. He says, "Jack, check this out." He'll hand him this fancy little piece of paper that he's clipped out. You can see it's the Gemini horoscope for the day, showing that he's going to be in excellent riches and find a woman. He says, "Hey, it came true for me once." What is this? <laughs> every day, every day in the paper. I read it like Hold it out at the arm's distance to be able to read it. Gemini, you're in for riches and when, uh, when are you going to get riches? When you get riches, hey, I'll tell you what, I'm, you buy me a new couch. <laughs> I'll buy you four new couches, my friend. Don't worry. And, and, and a new flask. I seem to drink most of yours. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> that stuff isn't cheap, you know. I'll put it back in my coat. Well, now it's Where's gone. My... It feels pretty empty. I'll hit a big one of these days, and uh, maybe you can come back to New York with me, and you can see what it's like to live a big life. <laughs> I've been in New York. Speechless, speechless. I knew you would be. I uh, go over to Thomas and um, say, excuse me, friend. Uh, may I borrow your newspaper for a minute? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look for the horoscope. You know, kind of hand it over. Uh, what's your symbol, my friend? Uh, let, me, uh, let, me, let me guess. You look like a, a Sagittarius. How do you know that? I can see it in your eyes, man. They sparkle well, in the sky, stars in the sky. Well, I don't really believe in these things, but um, do enlighten me. What does my future hold for me? Yeah, well, you're going to flip those pages open and I'll sit here, Darius. Oh, wow, look at this. It says that uh, you would be on a wealthy sort of trip today. And look at this. You're, you're traveling across the ocean right now. Well, not necessarily the ocean, but, you know, the, the seawater at least. That's a hell of a trip if I must say so myself. I do it regularly, so, yeah. I can imagine they write every once in a while. Yeah. Well, like I said, you, you met me. You know, I'm, a, I'm quite the famous author. Uh, I'll sign one of my books later for you. I'm sure you have a few. Oh, really? And uh, whom do I have the pleasure to be speaking with then? Well, uh, you know, my, my ready name is uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, I've wrote quite a few books in my day. And you never heard about it. <laughs> no, never heard about it. Uh, well, clearly, I'm kind of New York. Then you should go visit sometime. Maybe that's the trip that this is. This this horoscope is telling about. You should go to New York, my friend. There's a train that runs all the way across this U.S. Straight line, right into Grand Central Station. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I'd rather go to Egypt, though. Heard a lot about uh, those excavations going on there. Hmm. Been a while since the Carter team found anything. That could be quite. Well, story. you'll probably have to go through New York to get to Egypt. Well, yeah. Unless you're gonna. That's the quickest route. I mean. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If I am ever in New York, if I get there, I'll pick up one of your books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look me up. Look me up. I. Uh... Quite the uh, manor house that I have there. You, you're more than welcome to a couch. Thank you. As you're talking about your livelihood and such, <clears throat> true or not true, you see mm -hmm. in the distance ahead of you um, some billowing fog just coming up. Like I said, in the distance, and it looks like at first, like those fluffy clouds you see sometimes in the sky, but uh, pretty, pretty fast, they become more substantial and thicker. Which is not unusual, though. But that seems to be the end of your um, 
or a star, starry, starry night. No more stars to gaze at. Soon, at I'm, least, yeah. Letting, You're driving I'm... directly up to it. It looks like some rough weather we're going to get. No, friend, it's just a fog bank. Happens all the time around here. Does the uh, ferryman uh, blow the horn at all? Not yet. But um, you would know as soon as you enter the fog, or if you still will enter it, um, then they will take care of that on, on Goat Island, on all the things you pass there. The ships will blow their horns, yeah. But not yet. It's still in the distance. You will reach it probably in about 10 minutes. And you can probably only see it because of the, the stars in the sky who shine some light on the river, uh, uh, on the river, on the sea in front of you. It's actually a pretty nice picture. Nice view. Very poetic. Yeah. <laughs> But you see some some of the uh, seamen walking along the ship. You see that they stop at the front and look out to the fog bank, and they don't seem to be too pleased, actually, because if it really is a thick fog bank, then they will arrive late tonight. Might as well get yourselves in and get warm. It's going to be a long trip. And it's not really warm inside here. I mean, it's warmer than on the outside, especially with the wind of the sea. But um, it's not like it's cozy in here. So usually there are about 70 people in here. So th there's a lot of warmth going on. But right now you're only about 10 people and you're sitting far, far away from each other. Man, Jack, you should uh, really invest in a couple more flasks. Yeah. Time to get cozy. Tell you what, when my birthday comes around, don't give me one of those, what do you call them, horoscopes? Get me a flask. <sighs> well... One of these days. One of these days. When you've got more money, right? <laughs> I have plenty of money. Oh, of course. Just not here just in the in city. The yeah. yeah, right. Who well, just has no access to it. That's right. The, those New York banks haven't quite reached across the states yet. You know, still. Who, who wants to roll a psychology roll? <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> Oh, low high could do it. He has a high psychology. Yeah, Morgan, you can. Uh, Morgan, um, my psychology uh, is okay. Uh, Thomas, you can roll a. Um, what's that? Fast talk. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I don't so, even know if so, I'm any good. So at low that. high actually failed. So okay. Actually, I'm pretty decent at fast talk. Huh? Oh shoot! I need dice. That would make sense. Ah, Ooh. I just regular. I just made a psychology roll Very right good. on the money. Suppose I should get it. Did you want me to go ahead and roll fast talk, or? Yep. Yes, please. Okay. To see how 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 good you sell your story. Oh, let's see. Oh, I got a thirty-four, <laughs> and my best talk is a thirty-five. So I got that by one point. Right? Regular success, nice. <clears throat> I got an O one on psychology. You have what, Harry? An O one on psychology. I don't need psychology to know yeah. that uh, so, Thomas is full. Of yeah. Yes, you you <laughs> knew it from the beginning, and um, 
I don't know why you decided to let him talk <laughs> and I like keep stories. his story. Oh yeah, right. That's true. Yeah. I, I've Ward. been known to tell the tall tale myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, all the others, uh, yeah, you you are not sure, um, Oliver. You're not, you're not sure if it could be, but uh, you're you're not sure. But the others, yeah, interesting personality there. Rich author, nice. And uh, while you try to assess this interesting man, you finally enter that fog bank, and sadly it didn't disperse in front of your eyes in time. So you're suddenly surrounded from one moment to the other, you're surrounded by thick, whitey fog. And you hear suddenly the horns going, and from the distance you hear another horn, and sometimes some some white light trying to dig its way through the white but uh doesn't work too well and after maybe half a minute only suddenly you hear the motors the steam engines suddenly go completely silent and you realize they shut down the motors and Jack, you would know, of course, that it's incredibly dangerous for a ship of that size to go on in fog bank without any, uh, yeah, way to see where they are going. And uh, the seamen who enter the launch again, they don't seem to be happy. They're talking amongst themselves. And uh, you can roll me a list and roll, everyone. No luck for me, oh. but I'll be getting up to uh, go investigate mm -hmm. the hex oh, here, here. the engine. What's... I got a hard success. Oh, nice. I hear no. nothing. Utter failure. Failure? Same here. Okay. Uh, Morgan, don't forget to check your skills, uh, which you used successfully, right? Mm -hmm. So you make that check mark next to the skill so you can have a possible upgrade later um so for everyone who passed they're clearly talking about um yeah they will be losing a lot of time but uh lohai you you hear them discussing that this really doesn't happen too often and that's really yeah shitty coincidence that it had to happen today and uh yeah, like I said, it's not not happening too often. Are they ringing a bell or, or hitting a horn just to tell yeah. people yeah. that they're there? Yeah, they are. You hear them not constantly, but uh, they use the horn like every minute, every two. And you hear something from the distance as well, so you're definitely not alone. But you realize now that the that the engines are shut off or shut down, suddenly there is an eerie silence. And of course that's for one, because it was so loud before, but now it seems even creepier silent. And it did, doesn't really help that there are only like 15 people on the ship. And you see that fog still billowing around you. The fog itself seems to be moving in itself. And it should only be white behind the windows, right? But it, it seems to be moving. Did you say there was some lights coming, trying yeah. to break their way through? Yeah, you see from the distance, from the, hold on, from the north, if if that's still the direction, of course. You see from the north um, that there is some kind of light sometimes blinking up. It illuminates the whole fog, you know, because it's so white. But um, it doesn't reach the boat itself. It's too, too okay. dense. 
It's not getting tor closer to us, uh -oh. at least rapidly. All right, that's yeah. good. Does it look like it's coming from something that's stationary? Or you're not sure, moving? because you're not stationary. You're definitely gliding over the water, of course, because uh, you can't stop the flow or the undercurrent here. So, I'm not sure. Did you take uh, some kind of sea seamanship or something, Jack? Oh, yes, of course. I've got drive, uh, what is it, pilot boat, uh, a little bit of mechanical stuff. Yeah, roll me a drive boat then. We just abstract this one. Yeah, I got an 07. I mean, we're wasting all these good rolls here. Nice, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's a uh, critical success. Nice, yeah. So uh, you you passed along here as well before on your ship. And, uh, you know, there are a few lighthouses actually positioned um, <clears throat> on Goat Island and uh, Alcatraz. But Alcatraz is too far away. So that would be totally off course. But um, you think that it might be maybe the lighthouse from Goat Island? All right, good. Um, well, at least as long as we can keep that in our sights. Um, I'll, I'll go up toward the, uh, the bridge and see if I can get up and ask the captain what's going on and offer to help. You see two of the seamen uh, standing in the door uh, to the bridge, and uh, they look up as you approach and say, um, please, please, would you stay downstairs, sir? I'm sorry, you froze, so I'm, after oh. they said please, I didn't hear anything else. <laughs> oh, <you see? laughs> I'm sorry. So they, they, they listen to you, but they shake their heads. Please stay downstairs, sir. We will continue soon, as soon as the fog goes, goes away. You mean you shut the engines off intentionally? Of course. We can't continue. Well... All right, I just shrug my shoulders and uh, and shake my head and, and go back and to the group and say, these guys are mad. Why? Well, everyone knows that a ship that's not under power is drifting. So they're just going with the, wherever the tide's taking them. They, you, <clears throat> even if you can't see where you're going, you at least want to have the engines going and make, so you can make forward progress and, and use your compass. You can roll me spot hidden check though. Just remember, only you though. No, no luck. Oh, okay. So. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we're gonna be here for a while, folks. So we're just gonna drift here? That, that sounds really bad. And the band stopped playing. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, is, is the tide going out? Maybe the bay will pull the this ferry out towards San Francisco if the tide's going out. I would know whether the tides were going in and out. Yeah, that's true. That's a good question. Hmm. Huh. Let's say yes. That's convenient. <laughs> so so there's. So go ahead. So, so these guys are bringing us in a in a dangerous situation. We should we should go and talk to the captain. This isn't this isn't right. Well, you're, you're right, but he is the captain. It's his ship. He's in charge. Everyone knows captain's in charge on the boat. Even when they make stupid-ass decisions. It's the way it goes. But I am eyeing the uh, lifeboats as we're having this conversation. Mm-hmm. 
<coughs> are there lifeboats? Yeah, yeah. And you, you, um, Jack would have seen that they are in a uh, pretty good condition. So that's at least a pro here. So I would look for that life preserver that they have with the boat's name on it. <laughs> life preserver? <laughs> yeah. What? There's this ring. It's a white ring with the oh. name of the boat on it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to find where that is. I mean, just notice where it is so I can get to it in case something happens. Yeah, you, you don't see shit from here, so you would have to go outside. Yeah, sure, I'll look for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as soon as you open the door and you set a foot to the outside, you hold your hand out and you see a clump of grayish-white moving arm thing in front of you. Like, you know it's your arm, but it doesn't look like it. You know? Oh. Yes. Uh, I'd go back in and close the door. <laughs> yeah. And you see it's two of the possible. sailors standing on the other side. There is another door opening to the other side, which is closed now, of course. And you see them discussing very heatedly. They, like I said, they're not happy with this situation, but they seem to be a little bit... Um, yeah, they're they're close to to a really heated discussion here, but can they try to stay this? far away from you. What can, can can I sort of move closer to listen in on what they're saying? Sure. Yeah, I was uh, about to do the same. But you probably don't go really close, right? Only yeah, so, halfway so, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, up to when I can start hearing what they're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, roll me listen roll again for the two of you. Oh, four. I mm -hmm. got an extreme. Nice. 94. Yeah, you don't hear shit. But uh, no. Mohai, as member of a, yeah, I wouldn't say minority here, but uh, as not a respected member of society, he hears a lot while not being seen actually right yeah and you you managed to get a get a lot closer and you hear something very very disturbing because uh, one of them says to the other i i swear i will i will i will kick the captain overboard if he does this again i mean you can't just turn off the engines we're drifting and you you heard that before from jack mm -hmm, from your from friend jack. and um you can't we can't let them i mean i drink as well i just got a little drink from that other passenger but but not like this he can't he can't drive this boat that way we can't let that happen again and honestly, I have a really bad feeling about this night. I don't know why, but I kind of have a feeling we will never get back home. Hmm. <clears throat> no, I'll, after that, I'll go back to where Jack is, and then I'll, I'll find Jack and go, Oh, Jack, uh, I overhear. They say uh, uh, Captain is drunk. He it's the second time he has done this. He get drunk and 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 he turn off engine and do some mm, sort of blind piloting. What? The crew is the the crew is scared. Oh lord! I've got to see this for myself. Oh my! This just keeps getting worse. You should teach this man how to drive, Jack. You, you, you would probably be able to do that, actually, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, or Jack, well, you, you talk to crew members who are panicked. Maybe you can um, make them let you drive. You drive, Jack. Yes, you drive, Jack. <laughs> yes. Who is, Jack. It, who is it that you heard this from, Wong? I, I sort of nod my head towards the direction of those two crew members that were talking. Oh, that's one of the, that's the guy who was serving coffee earlier, and hmm. and he he said he say same thing you say, no uh, 
crazy person would turn off engine drift. You seem more reputable than a drunk captain, Jack. I think you're our only hope here. So while you're talking, you look constantly back to to the fog, I would assume. And suddenly the fog, like as if he's drifting away a little bit, he's not dispersing, but it seems to be just shoved to the side, but not too far, but you can see very close, maybe 30 feet. It's, it's hard to tell because it's still a little bit foggy, of course, but about 30 or 40 feet away, you see a giant thing, darkness, in front of or in the fog itself. It seems to be or seems to have the size of the fairy itself. Wait, and Jack, it... you, you immediately have the thought, oh my god, this is another ship. Yeah. This is another I... fairy. I, I leap to my feet and I'm going over there, pounding on the window. Boat! Boat! <laughs> <laughs> Ring the bells, and you don't. You hear the bells from your ship and the horn and all that stuff, all that good stuff, but nothing from that other dark mass in the fog. And this is really weird because, of course, they would be on the lookout as well, and they should have seen you as well now already. And they should use their bells and their horns, but nothing is happening there. Is it and closer? Um, no, it stays parallel to you, you right. think? It's really hard to tell. But you see the other sailors, they rush up to the windows as well, open mouth, and one says, I don't know if we're getting closer, but I, I will tell the captain. And you see him rushing off to the bridge, and um, yeah, the I other one the stays. Other one. I grab the other one by the the by his shoulder. Get the lights on that thing. Yeah, yeah. Any you see him immediately rush out to to the outside into the fog, and he enters the fog at a part of the ship where it's still dense, denser than between those two objects, your ship and them, whatever it is. And you see some light flashing, of course. Does it illuminate the thing? Worse. Um, hardly. Oh, I've read about this. I think it's a pirate ship. <laughs> Roll me spot hidden, actually, <laughs> Thomas. A spot? Yes. Oh, let's see. <laughs> That would be a hard success. Oh, nice. Yeah, because you you had just that thought of a pirate ship, and you keep staring at it. I'm up to the glass. A, hands yeah. Face, look in the window. And it has such a distinct shape, you realize. This is definitely not another fairy. That would look more like a square thing in the water. But this one... This, this, it goes at the front and at the back, it lifts itself out of the water, like, like those old ships of old days, you know, but pretty, pretty large. Yeah. This reminds me of a story that I wrote. Oh, me too. another me too. author. <laughs> of course, mine was published. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking about your stories. What's going on? I say we talk to the captain now. So can we get to the bridge without going outside? Actually, no, you have to go outside. You've been there before, right? So yeah. you just um, exit and you knew that you just had to go around the corner and there is a staircase going up. And then there is a door which enters into the bridge. And that's the direction that that other sailor went. Yes. Okay. All right. I will head off in that direction. Mm -hmm. Anyone else coming? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm coming with you. This can't be. No. Something has to happen here. 
Well, I've written a lot of stories in my day and read a lot. I'm not going out there. Yeah. I just mean, you're not. If you're a published author, you should use your influence. Well, I look out for myself first. And, you know, that, that fog's a little dense. You guys got some nasty fog around here. Not like they have in New York. Uh, if you need my help, you can come back down and get me. I'll be happy to uh, throw my weight around a little. Yeah, yeah. Wong's not welcome up there, so he's he's staying down here. He's staying Wong with your nose. Have him sign his uh, horoscope today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Wong presses his nose against the, the, the window, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you other two, you walk upstairs. It's a little bit difficult to find your footing. Now that you can't see shit anymore, you only see white around you. And like I said, even if you stretch out your mm -hmm. arm, you can barely see your hand. But you manage because you, you've been there before now, um, Jack. Yep. Hold on to the railing. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And with the with the help of the railing, you get upstairs. You enter uh, the f the first door. It doesn't enter directly onto the bridge, but to a little hallway or front chamber. And there are the rest of the the crew, or not all of them, four four of the crew, and they're still discussing. And you see that man, probably the captain, with a with that hat, which you own probably as well, sitting in a chair on the bridge. And he doesn't seem to be really concerned. Just staring out into the white. Uh, so one of the crew members is the one that um, went running off to talk about the thing. Are they trying to reason with the captain or are they arguing amongst themselves or at the moment they are arguing amongst themselves and immediately they stop as you open the door and they look to you and say um we're we're taking care of this sir uh, please wait downstairs what you heard before uh, i served with the merchant marine in the war i i know this isn't a safe situation we're in there's there's Another ship out there. We got to get underway. What's going on up here? It, we we, yeah. we we told the captain already, but but he thinks it's it's better to to wait to bait our time. He doesn't even turn around. He's just so he, staring. he can hear he can hear this conversation. Yes, the definitely, captain. definitely. Captain, I I've got to have a word with you. And now, finally, as you start shouting, he gets up from his chair. He's not like like a total drunk that he you you don't see him flying to the side as he tries to get up, but he's definitely not totally stable. And um, you see that typical drunk nose, totally red and really disgusting. And he turns around to you and he says. So what do you want to tell me on my own ship here, sir? I'm a captain of a ship as well, and I respect that this is your ship, but you know as well as I do that this isn't safe. You don't I'm no know. captain. What? I'm no captain, but I know that you are endangering us all. This is not right. Do something. No. You have no idea. You have no idea. You don't know the sea as I do. The dangers. I've, I've traversed these waters for four years. Did you? Did you see the phantoms? Did you hear the stories about the ships? almost destroying cliff house did you know about the rio de janeiro the lost hulk of it i can tell you all about it can you are you talking about the sh the graveyard yes the ship graveyard i have seen that 
But I didn't stop my ship. But you should have. It's more dangerous to continue your travel. You will end up in the land you don't want to land in. Are we really talking about ghosts? Those things don't exist. <laughs> and you see him shake his head. And he seems to be really troubled now. And he turns around again, takes a seat. Let's go down to uh, to the other three for a moment. So, you're are you staring out the whole time? Yeah. I so, am. so if there there's this big black object out, like let's say port side, then I would be furthest away from it on the starboard side, just in case. Okay, so uh, you don't want to be close to it. Just no, to make sure. in case okay. it hits the boat and start sinking the boat, I might be on the other side from it. Well, it's still far away, or far enough away, so yeah. you could still move away in time, you would think, if it's uh, yeah, going to be dangerous. But, but who uh, knows in this fog? You can't see anything. So yeah, would, it's, it's, would, it's a little bit difficult. Shuffle away a little. But uh, the other two, um, you keep staring out, and you see that uh, the fog move a little bit away with time. It takes, you almost don't notice it, but after about five minutes, there is clearly some progress in the fog movement. And you finally see it's like you already thought. It's no fairy there. It's some kind of, yeah, ship of ancient times, although not, not that ancient. And it has two really distinct sails. And um, they remind you of something, but you can't put your finger on it. And you would see that too, um, low high. You would see that there is something more visible now, mm. but you can't see clearly do, from your. Do we see any people on the decks of that other ship? No. Sort of just like the silhouette, basically. Yes. Could I do a I'll history finish. check to see if I recognize the sails? Yeah. Many of my studies. I make up some cock, some asinine uh, explanation, <laughs> just just so just so I don't feel so bad for my utter failure at not knowing what the hell these sails are. But I'm still real fascinated by the fact that this could be some sort of a ghost ship. My imagination is going just a million miles a minute right now. Yeah, you're not the only one. The other passengers who entered with you, uh, they are hugging the windows as well, and you hear all kinds of weird wild stories about what this could actually be from pirate ship to to uh, another kind of ferry and uh whatever this whole time you can see thomas is quickly taking notes in his little notepad that he has writing everybody's stories down can, can i do an occult check do you go closer uh well with the occult check yeah i want to maybe try to figure out what give me first be. um a spot in? Yeah, give me just a spot in. Oops, I made the spot in right Okay. Uh, you immediately realize as you come closer, this is very familiar to you. This is definitely 100% a Chinese junk. It's a junk? Uh -oh. Yes. Okay, do a cult check. Do you get? Uh, let me do. Uh, no, I fail. Okay. Yeah, an interesting Chinese junk. And what's what's weird about it? Well, aside from that, it's a Chinese junk. Um, you see the outlines, of course, and you would you would assume that if there are people on it, you would see them outlined as well. But what you see is um that there are like scraps hanging from the sail 
and there seem to be some gaps in the railing and such. You're not sure because you can't see properly, but you think this is really a little bit der derelict, like yeah. damaged. Doesn't look really, I, I mean, it's not sinking, but um, usually you wouldn't travel on sea with a ship in that condition. Is there any uh, writing on any of the sails or anything like that? No. Friends of yours, Wong. No. Uh, no, look like ghost ship. Ancient ghost ship from China. Ghost ship. You definitely haven't seen such a ship here before. I'm going to turn to Thomas and say, I really want to get on this ship. I really want to explore this thing. You can call me crazy. You know? Don't tell the others. Well, the water's cold this time of year, so Mark Twain said something like that anyway. Uh, if it's swim. a ghost ship, it may be full of hopping ghosts. They will steal your soul. Oh. I don't like Chinese ghosts. It's a small price to pay to experience something that could be quite inspirational for my tales. Are any of the other people around us notice this as well, or they just kind of try to stare at it as... Definitely, they're, they're hanging with their noses in front of the window, and they keep staring. And of course, you heard already the rumor or, or the tale of the ghost ship, and some of them are uh, seem to be convinced that this is actually one because this is too weird. Mm -hmm. What the hell are those other two doing? They need to get the ship moving. Yeah, let's get to go back to the other two. The captain just took his seat again. Can we still see the uh, the lighthouse lights? No. Do we see anything of uh, the ship outside? Uh, yeah, if you if you look for a moment down and in, in the direction of the ship, you would see the same as the other others did. And in fact, as you're listening for a moment, you heard before some kind of, of course, horns from other ships far, far around you and such, and bells. This soft completely. You only hear the water clapping against the ship, your ship, and the other one. I uh, crouch down by the captain and try to conspiratorially try to be friendly. Um, what happened to the lighthouse? I saw a goat, goat Island lights just a moment ago. And he, he glances at you more from the corner of your, his eyes instead of moving his head. And he whispers, it won't be here for some time. So, so you've been through this before? He just nods slowly. And it seems to be weighing on him. Do I How hear this conversation? Um, do you walk closer with yeah. him? Yeah, then you would hear. It's of course, idiocy you hear there. I mean, how could a lighthouse be gone, right? I, I stand up, I, you know, um, Thomas, you're, we're, our characters haven't been introduced yet, but we have been hanging out a little bit down there. Um, I, I stand up and gently touch your shoulder and say, it's all right. I, I've seen this before. What do you mean you've seen this before? What's going on here? 
I, I pull you over to a corner of the bridge and say, look, you don't know me, but, but I'm a captain as well. I, I ply these waters and, and one night in the fog, I was steaming along and I swear I was surrounded by three, four, five old ships, like ships that had come in maybe with the um, the the gold miners that should have been sunk long ago, but they were just floating there around me and I didn't see any other lights. I, it scared me. Let's just say it scared the living daylights out of me. I kept going. I I plowed through and and uh, well, I, I have to admit that I don't remember exactly what happened after that. But but I'm here and I'm okay. Um, I always thought maybe I just dreamt it, but it's what he's describing. And he's he says he's seen it before, and that if we keep moving, we might we might go not just off course and hit something, but we might go off course off the map, I think is what he's trying to tell us. You see him nodding. He's not looking to you. He's again looking to the fog outside and you just see him nod slightly in acknowledgement. So, uh, wow. I don't know what to say. Has everybody lost their mind here? The sailors definitely are of that opinion. They're shaking their head. One of them is staying up in the in the bridge, but the others leave it, followed by some curses. <laughs> what are we supposed to do then? Just let this madness go on and, and all I see is some some ship in the dark. I don't know what's going on. Well, as long as it doesn't come to us, I think we're safe. We've got our lights on, so if there's another real ship, modern ship. It will see us, and if we see if we see the lights of the uh, the lighthouse, any lighthouse or any other uh, lights, we can maybe start steaming toward them. But until then, I think we just wait. Whoa. Um Mr. Um, what's your name? Jack, Jack, Jack Lucy. Well, I don't know, Mr. Lucy. This is all too much for me. I, I don't know. I don't get it. And if I could, I would do something and take hold of this ship myself. But I don't know anything. I, this is so, so confusing. I reach for my flask to offer to you again, but then I realize that you mm -hmm. don't drink, and even if you did, it's, it's empty, empty, so I put it back into my... <laughs> <laughs> when I saw you reach for it, I, I, I said, yeah, maybe maybe it's time for it. That, yeah. Give me some, please. I, I open it up and, sorry. I'll uh, uh, look around. The captain's got to have a bottle sitting there. Mm. Uh, mm, yeah, you would, you would probably see it immediately. Yeah. He's drinking good scotch, actually. Awesome. I, uh, I point, it, point it out to you. Well... So I take that bottle and uh, take a big sip, I mean, swallow it. He only says, or he mumbles something 
agreeing, agreeable. He has his mind on other troubles right now. Captain, how long do you wait? How as long does long this go as it on? Takes. As long as it takes. I take another ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, go ahead. And he points over to the other ship. What is there to see? You ask for another ship, there it is. <laughs> no, it's, go, it's, 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 never mind. <laughs> I go over to the other sailor. Sort of whispered to him, my thumb pointing back over my shoulder to the captain. You sailed with him before? Yeah, but this didn't happen before. At least not to me. But now I know why. Why his crew changed. Oh. This is disturbing. Put my hand on my chin. His crew changed. Yeah. When, when, when did that happen? Maybe a year ago. Oh, so you've been sailing with him for a year and nothing happened like this? No. I mean, what? he's a weird fellow. And he doesn't seem to care that the captain can hear him. He's a weird fellow. But he's a good man. Yeah. I think, so. I think he is too. And he turns around again. And watch make sure there's, the fog. Make sure the uh, boys down in the engine room keep the uh, keep the steam on at least, though, right? Keep I'll the see what I can hot. do. I'll look out again to see if I can see any sign of that lighthouse. Absolutely none. No light from that direction and from none of the other directions. Nothing. Mr. Lucy, sir, what are we going to do now? We, we can't just wait. Did you bring a deck of cards? <laughs> no. What, you, what do you propose to do, mister? What is your name, by the way? Sepsford. Francis Sepsford. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> in, in these circumstances, I'm not really doing so well. I have no idea what's going on. Everybody acts like they don't even care. Our life is in danger. Oh, son, don't worry. Our life isn't in danger. It's not great to be uh, drifting. But, you know, the worst that can happen is that we run aground. Maybe, maybe worse than that, we run up on some rocks. Can you swim? No. No, I don't swim. You've seen the Aren't there any light boats? Yeah, yeah. There are six of them. <laughs> Can't we just take a lifeboat and make a run for it? You hear the captain's laughter really deep, and it doesn't sound like a real laughter. It sounds a little bit despaired. What are you laughing at? Do you want to stay here forever, son? Go ahead. Take a lifeboat. Try to find your own way. Your friend here 
he seems to know stay here forever where is here if i knew maybe i would be a happier man or maybe not i don't know i want to get out of here again and i managed the last time by just staying where i am i've got some navigation skills can i see anything on the compass or do you have one ships or do you go to the one he has yeah i go to the ship's instruments Romy sanity <clears throat> That's a success. Okay, you lose one point as you glance at the compass. And it's turning around on itself like a really, really fast clock. Whoa. Turning and turning and turning and it doesn't stop. Well, Mr. Lucy, sir, sir, please come and look at this. This, I don't know. Help! <laughs> what, what, what's going on? Look at this. Look at the needle of this compass. And that's probably the same what happened to you as well, Jack, when you had that incident with the ships. Yeah. Compass was going crazy. That's why I don't like your role for sanity as well. You've seen that before. Calm yourself, Mr. Stafford. Calm yourself. I can, I can see. I can I shake you a little bit. I can, I can see that you haven't spent much time at the sea. Instruments like a compass are not always reliable. No shit. <laughs> the captain comments. Let's go back to the other three for a moment. So. You actually hear some shouts from above, not like... Oh, from the crew? Uh, well, from the bridge direction. It doesn't sound like one, somebody's going to be shot in the next minute, but it seems to be a little bit uh, heated. Thomas will look over at Wong. Well, I think you should get up there and see what the issue is, Wong. Me? That's uh, the right person. <laughs> yeah, well, you can go they, check it out. They don't want me up there. Go check it out, Wong. <laughs> we won't tell anyone. Maybe the we'll watch ship is just too. in dire need. <laughs> I'm going to look around, and then I'll try to sneak upstairs. Uh, so you don't want the the people upstairs to see you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to Okay. Um, then, yeah, then the other two roll me a spot hidden, please, and you roll me a stealth. I got a 99 on stealth. Yeah. You trip over your roby thing you're wearing uh -huh. and clunk! on the stairs and they're made of metal so it sounds resounds in the whole ship <laughs> oh wow. damn even without <laughs> that i spun at you yeah i'll go over and help my friend up he, he lent me a few free washes in the day so yeah but you see the other two upstairs now the conversation has died down of course or i assume <laughs> and uh yeah yeah, so I'll, I'll like brush myself off and continue up the stairs. <laughs> and you see the captain sitting there, staring out into nothingness. And so yeah, I two. look at I look at Jack like and shrug my shoulders like, "What's up?" <laughs> and I kind of shrug back at you, <laughs> like, "Don't worry about it."
Thomas will follow along as well, kind of coming up. So I, mean, I guess you would probably see him as he kind of shrugs back. And mm -hmm. you know, Thomas will look over at you, Jack, and just kind of put his hand up, kind of confused. What the hell? I, sure I, th I thought you were going to drive this boat or something. I sure wish you hadn't finished off that flask. Could use that right now. Well, it was good while it lasted, right? So, uh, Guys, don't worry. Drive? I thought we couldn't just sit here and drift in water. Isn't that what you said, Jack? Well, you know, the captain is the one who's responsible for making the decisions. In this case, I think the captain has made the right choice after all. Sounds a little bit different to what he told you before, of course. Yeah. I almost like I look <laughs> off at this. Yeah, the ghost ship yep. next to us. <laughs> so we're just going to sit here, be killed by pirates. Yeah. Well, what's going to happen to all my money, Jack? I, I take a squint and take a close look out the window at the, uh, at the junk floating next to us. Turn back. I don't see any pirates, Thomas. All I see is an abandoned ship that shouldn't be there. And you can see it now a little bit better again. Seems to be from minute to minute it, it gets better, better view on it. And um, you can clearly see now how damaged it is. Still seaworthy. But uh, yeah, there is clearly the, the let's say uh, the teeth of age was gnawing on it. Yeah, so it looks like it's just deteriorating. It's not like yeah. some giant sea creature attacked it. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Nothing moving there. on it. The ship out there. Well, I, I, I turned to Jack like that ship. It out there many, many, many years. How long really do you figure it's been out there, Wong? Decades. Many, many years. Kind of like it you was say, lost, huh? You say we sit here for many, many years? No. Captain's been through this before. Ask him how long he sit here before last time. I just, I figured the captain's heard that. I'd look over at him. And there's some silence. And if you let him be silent, probably for a minute, actually, he stays silent. And then he says, no worry, son. I barely missed a minute of my life. What's he talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah, Thomas just looked between Wong and Jack and Francis. So are we getting home tonight or I pass you the bottle of the captain. Ah, now this is more like it. I like you, Francis. That's actually good scotch. Cheers. Thomas, you didn't bring your cars, did you? My cars? Well, no. Your cards. Oh, my cards. Well, I have many cars back in New York, but cards. No, 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 I didn't. Just just this horoscope. I said I was going to have a great night, man. What the hell? This isn't turned out to be so great. <laughs> I, it did say I, I would meet an interesting fellow, though. I turned to Thomas. I go... What, what horoscopes say about me? You would know that they have different horoscopes, you know, like snake and rat and 
It so that's, always that's, sounded that's, very weird. Yeah, yeah that, that's by year versus the. <laughs> yeah, he don't. He doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I just look at you, kind of confused. Asians don't have horoscopes. You have <laughs> monkeys my, my, and rats. My, my horoscope. I am snake. What does it say about snake? You look like a Taurus. You're a Taurus. Kind of... <sighs> hmm. It says to follow in your footsteps, but to never walk backwards. I don't know. What that I, means. I I never walk backwards. What does that mean? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know how to interpret these things. I just go with what they say. Start walking around Are you backwards. You're quoting Goldfuzzy is now. <laughs> Oliver. Are you still staring at the ship? I've been staring at this ship for 25 minutes now and still nothing. Oliver, you're sure just... the last five minutes the ship came closer. <laughs> it's getting closer. <laughs> I'm waiting for some, some sort of movement in there. I'm just expecting something to emerge from the bowels of this old Chinese ship. So. So I turned to Thomas. You say Gemini, uh, vast treasure? You think uh, maybe junk holds vast treasure? Oh, well, that's very interesting, Wong. What kind of treasure do the Chinese have? Gold, I hear gold and jade. And opium? Well, that's... Yeah. That's hmm. Captain Perry's prom. <laughs> <laughs> Opiates, you say. Well, if you want to go over there, Wong, you're more than welcome. But I'm quite content with me and Frankie's uh, scottle of scotch here. Well, I don't swim too well. I wait till a uh, ghost ship crashes into ferry. Then we can cross. Crashes? I'll just kind of look at Jack like, we got to move. Wong says this is going to crash into us. We can't have a ghost ship crashing into our ship. I'm just lost in thought looking out at that junk. Yeah, you realize as they're just talking about crushing into your ferry, you realize, shit, it's coming closer. <laughs> That's where we have a short break. <laughs> <laughs> sure, bud. Okay. That sounds good.
I'm back. Still here. Cool. So no worries, this is only the introductionary stuff I'm doing with you. It's going to be more interesting later. After we get killed by a ghost ship? Yeah, yeah just wait. Or after we're dead. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> like, well, <laughs> maybe. We'll just leave some people on the ship while the, the ferry goes away. <laughs> I don't know if you want that, but yeah. I don't know if I can swim. I really I want to get on this on this goat ship. Is everyone back? Oh no, Harry. Do you have someone with mythos aside from Harry? No, right? Oh, I asked that before. I do. Yeah. Oh, you have? How much? Yeah, five percent. Okay. Where is mythos? Uh, uh, Cthulhu. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At sea. I only have occult knowledge, no no mythos knowledge. Okay. It's you under have Cthulhu. the option to do, though, if you want. Oh, 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 I see. No, right there. Yeah, you should have uh, five. Probably didn't try to increase it. Should I try now? It's too late now. Uh, you could. Let's see. Oh, you pee. I'll try. No. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> no. No. What are you doing? Nope. I'm trying oh, to increase my... Yes. You didn't do your improvements roll. No, I did, but I never I never took Cthulhu Mythos. I only have a couple oh, okay. of knowledge. I have zero. Yeah. You should have five. Although, um, if you want to be uh, a non-believer, you can start with zero, of course. Yeah. I'll start with five. I just wanted to give you the option to to have it if you want. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I remember you mentioning that. Yep. All right. I'll send that later, but yeah. Welcome back, Harry. Thank you. So, uh, Jack, yeah, you, you just noticed that the ship is coming closer, although you're not sure if you, you are coming closer, or the ship, or both, and Wong, you asked for, um, for some, some, some writings on the ship, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you see one. Oh, what does and it say? Yeah, you have no idea because um, you've been to Berkeley today and this professor you were talking to about your necklace, he couldn't help you. He's, he had never seen such a thing and he was of the impression that it was just some... Um, I mean, the Chinese are a bit weird. They do those weird signs, you know, and mm -hmm. it all looks uh, it's total bullshit and... You weren't happy with that answer, probably, but that's what he told you. Mm. And roll me sanity. Uh, Thirty-six. Let me see what my sand is. I think you add more. I hope you add more. <coughs> oh, this character has seventy sand. Oh my god! Yeah. I made it. Good. Uh, you lose one point as you realize that the big sign on the hull of the ship is the exact same sign you have on your necklace. Is your necklace like being worn so we can see it or? That's a good question. <clears throat> well, actually I'll pull it out like from underneath my shirt and I show it to um, Thomas. I go, oh, you right. That is my treasure ship. See, same symbol. <laughs> oh man. But what do you think it means, Wong? Uh, that is my treasure ship. It 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 um it is great fortune. 
While you're doing pen, that, there this derelict that's coming towards us with. Maybe it wait it wait for for a long for many generation for a long to sail through these waters. Well, in that case, I suggest you go on board. Well, I'll wait till it crashes into ferry, then I will climb aboard the other ship. You you see that the 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 um, uh, the god seaman standing in the corner. He, you make him a little bit nervous with your prediction. Captain, do you see this? The junk's gonna hit us. Wow. I've already been looking for a boot for a, a buoy. Because all I can think about is getting on this ship. So I've been looking around the deck, and the starboard and port side for a buoy to try to find something to tie off. So if it does collide, it could just catch the bumper. Oh, they, and then they are definitely off. yeah yeah they are hanging down. Anyway, so. You would have some some protection, and so I'm going to move them towards the direction of the ship so mm -hmm. that the the bumpers will be in the right spot. Yeah, that's no problem. And um, uh, I mean the ships aren't like, whoo, driving, uh, in the yeah, uh, to well, uh, not like with speed they are moving. They're like drifting slowly, and you really have to to keep staring to see the movement at all so that won't be a hard crash definitely not so i'm really excited now so i'm gonna look for that lifesaver that they have like on a wall uh -huh. take it off and put it around myself first uh -huh. and then move towards where the ship will bounce off of our ship yep and get no ready problem. to like <laughs> mm -hmm. I see the pen, the pendant that you're wearing, and I say, "Oh, they they're coming for you, Wong. They know you're here. They're coming for you." Yes, yes, yes. I am so excited now. It is good fortune. These people are crazy. What if you have to throw them overboard? It will go away. Oh. And Wong, as you're, uh, do you go? You go outside, right? Yeah? yeah, you're yeah. standing outside with um, with a life preserver Oliver, on. Oliver, yeah. <laughs> you suddenly start smelling something. At first, it was only the sea air, and that, yeah, like moisty fog air. You were smelling the whole time, basically, but now. There is some sweet scent underlying all of it. It's not unpleasant, but weird. I say, oh, ancient incense. <laughs> Where is, uh, where's Francis? Is he still inside? No, I'm watching what uh, the others are doing outside. You go outside as well. It, yeah, this, this is too weird. And you smell I, it too. I can't get my... mm -hmm. And you can uh, you can roll me a history if you want. That's a um, huge success. What's huge? Hard or extreme? Uh, hard, extreme. Really? Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I rolled a nine. It reminds you of um, of some kind of Egyptian, Egyptian, not Chinese. Um, sent you. You said you you were doing some some um, archaeological stuff before, right? Yeah, I went yeah. to Congress about uh, <coughs> excavations and, in Egypt. Yeah, and they, they, there was one guy in particular who, who was talking about what they were using as scent. And he had some samples there. And this smells very close to that sample you were smelling there. Do I remember what uh, they use it for? Yeah, just to to send their homes and such. 
that's what he knew, though. You're not sure if that's exact, because, I mean, that's 2,000-plus years ago. Yeah. Uh, and shout out to the rest. Hey, uh, hey guys, th there's something even more off here. The, the scent, it isn't Chinese, it's, it's Egyptian. I heard about it and I smelled it at, uh, at the Congress I was on earlier. I have no idea what it, what this means, but nothing makes sense here. And the ship is coming dangerously <laughs> close I, now. I show uh, the, the symbol on my necklace to um, Francis. You say this Egyptian? You think it's not. You've never seen it before. Although you can roll me your mythos, actually, if you want. Who? Everyone. Uh, everyone who sees the, the necklace and wants to think about it. That's fair. Yeah, I, I assume so. Fail. Mm. Well, sometimes you can be lucky. Yeah, you've never seen anything like this before. It absolutely makes no sense. Mr. Chinaman, I don't think the ship is coming for you. I don't you, think ancient Egyptians want anything you, with you. You're wrong. That is ancient Chinese incense, not Egyptian. Were you even born in China? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I come here clean laundry of people who built your stupid railroad. <laughs> your great railroad. <laughs> During this heated discussion, suddenly your feet are almost rattled or your legs are almost rattled as the two ships suddenly collide. Boom! But Wait. the bumpers, luckily, are on the right place, so... Did, did the captain... I, I, I get uh, my treasure now. <laughs> what did the captain? Did, I, I had tried to get the captain's attention when the, uh, when the, the junk was slowly... Was, when oh, it was did you? I'm sorry. Toward us. I said, Captain, look, the, it's, it's going to hit us. And did, did, I, he, did it get his attention at all? Uh, yeah, he, he would have said that it's too slow to be of any danger to the ferry at all. We have to myself. wait. So, oh so, my. So now that the two boats have collided, can I climb onto the other, the deck of the other ship? Or? Easily. It's a okay. little bit lower than your um, side of the ship, of the ferry, but uh, it's no problem at all. Yeah, I, I say, I go get treasure. If I bring treasure back, you help carry it back up on ship. And one of the sailors uh, just shakes his head, and he, do he doesn't seem to care that you cross over, so he just enters back into the ferry. <laughs> Seeing Wong get ready to kind of climb up on this thing, I'll be like, wait, 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 Wong, Wong, Wong. I, I read the wrong horoscope. I clearly you are in. A Scorpio, a Scorpio. It says that you would be in perilous danger today. I don't think you want to go up there. No, no, no. Not Scorpio. Um, whatever you said it was before. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're a Scorpio, Wong. I mean, I cannot, I cannot go backwards. I must go forward according to your horoscope. Ah, oh, shit. Good one. Yeah, I, I jump onto the. <laughs> and immediately the smell gets way stronger and you see there are where's the sound coming from oh there um and you immediately hold on ah. and you immediately see um there are two entrances to probably the cargo deck below it's dark you can't see anything from your position where you jumped over to the ship. Um, like I said, everything looks, uh, yeah, worn, old. But I, it's... I, 
I, I tell Thomas, uh, hand me a lantern, a lamp. It's dark. I cannot see. Are you sure there's going to be treasure on the ship, Wong? Yes, yes. Your horoscope said so. Is there any sort yeah. of lamps or anything around? Um, that's a good question. Did they have? Did they have those hanging oil lamps in that? No, they would have had electricity. Minor, yeah. I'll just roll up my newspaper that I had really, really, really tight. Kind of light the tip of it and have that long, tightly rolled thing. So <laughs> good Get enough. You got to hold it tight, long. Don't let it unravel. Otherwise, the whole thing, your robes yeah. and everything. I like, good enough. Thank you. You think yeah, you should know. hurry because this won't... Yeah, I'll go through Hurry door number, door number one. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, come back now. This is wrong. You can't do this. He's going to bring us riches. Just, just. Yeah, all he's going to bring is crawling chaos or something like that. <laughs> ah. Wong, you, you walk up to, to one of the, the cargo deck yep. entrances. Yeah. You uh, set your foot on the first step. And roll me a power roll, please. Oh, I got 19. What? Which is a hard success. Did, I, did you say 19? Yes, I rolled a 19. Oh, you got a 19. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's a hard success. Yeah. And you feel a little bit woozy suddenly. And you, you think that's because of the smell getting stronger and stronger the closer you get to that cargo entrance but you stabilize yourself as you grab for one of the masks and just stay there for a moment closing your eyes and then you continue and you illuminate the stairs in front of you you can't see too much interestingly you see there is nothing of like dust on the floor, you you would expect to see that all around you, but there is none of it. There's not even trash lying around. But as you enter the cargo fully, roll me a sanity check. Oh, I failed. Oh, good. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, and that's a six for you. Six. Yes, and... Let's see. Roll your roll idea. Your end. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got an idea. <laughs> you have? Oh yeah. shit. Yeah. You stare at at something which seems a little bit familiar, actually. Aside from that, this gathering below deck is yeah only of dead people they look a little bit like mummies without their without that cloth around their bodies but they seem to be pretty well preserved eight people sitting along a very long table uh what you would expect to see in chinese homes today still in your home maybe um you see bowls and water mugs standing on the table Everything looks either uh, rotten or, yeah, fallen into dust. A little box is standing in the middle of the table, and there's a pipe lying across or, yeah, lying on top of it. Very intricate little box. And in your moment of almost madness, you see the, that little, those little intricate wooden inlays in the box. And you seem to be totally fixated on it, as if you, as if your brain wanted to, to bring your attention to something nice, aside oh, from those bodies that's sitting my around. Treasure. That's but, my treasure. Yeah, but your sadly your um your brain isn't strong enough. You glance at the bodies and you see them in their whole glory, and. You're scared. Okay, shitless. I, I, I run then. I run back up the stairs, screaming. 
Hey guys, you see that poor man in his robes suddenly emerge again with his makeshift torch well, in hand. I, I'm out, I throw the torch away, right? And keep run to grab the other boat and jump, try to climb back up onto the ferry. You didn't bring treasures, Swang. Get back there and bring the treasures. We need some treasures. Uh, 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 treasure, yes, treasure, but, but, but. But things wrapped in linen. Ah! I'll help you, Wong. Bodies, dead bodies wrapped in linen. No, they're not wrapped in linen. Sorry, oh, they, they seem to be uh, like like dried out corpses. Oh, so, so they're not they're not wrapped like the Egyptian. Wrap? Not no, sorry. <laughs> no, no, but oh. corpses definitely. Okay. there's no question. Okay, uh, dead bodies. Uh, there, uh, there's dead bodies there. I I can't I cannot rob the dead. That that would be bring a curse upon my house. I can come help you, Wong. I, I really am looking to get one of these skulls too. I cannot go back, but if you if you do though, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I'm gonna just huddle in the passenger area and, and just mutter for a long time until you you have temporary... five minutes, five yeah. minutes of craziness. <laughs> Seeing how shaken Wong is. Uh, what's the is the captain just kind of still sitting there? He's still sitting there. If you look up, you can see him through the window. He's just staring ahead, and he doesn't seem to be willing to to acknowledge what's going on on his ship. You can see some sweat kind of beading up on Thomas's forehead. Jack doesn't seem to be too concerned, and you know the captain doesn't seem too concerned, but clearly the this isn't right to begin with, and then seeing Wong like this, I don't have any sort of knowledge really about ships, but can I just like run in there and push a button? Like, I want to get us the hell out of here. Okay. Um, I mean, it, more of, most of them have the little, you know, the lever you push up to get going, at least turn the motor on or something. Yeah. Um, you can... Let's, let's uh, do this as a maneuver. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just roll an attack roll on the captain, basically, and let's see who is faster or who is more, more, uh, yeah, skillful here. So you just roll a brawl. I probably failed big time, but let's see what I got here. And huh, a seventy-eight, which I'm sure is a fail. <laughs> yeah, that's. Doesn't yeah. sound good. <laughs> All right, so you've just run up onto the bridge. <laughs> yeah, yep. You can just see that I'm running straight for whatever button or levers I might see to hit them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm still up on a bridge with Captain. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to interfere here? Thomas, or... what are you doing? I, I'm not uh, physically interfering, but I'm okay. interjecting. Yeah, I just kind of hit whatever I can and. Wong, he's he, he something something's on the ship. Yeah, you he's, can't he's even get body. close enough. That captain is <laughs> is faster than you would have anticipated. Actually, he's like as soon as he hears your fast footsteps behind him, he jumps up and his bulky figure just blocks your path to all those uh, levers and buttons and such. And we he doesn't say anything. Trying to reach behind him, obviously not being able to get past his walk. Like it, something's got to hold the wall. He's gone crazy. We can't stay here. We can't stay here. Even you said it, Jack. You said we couldn't be just drifting here. And how the ship is smacked into us, and that other author, well, supposed author, is climbing aboard, and Wong's going crazy. I put my arm around you. Come, come, come on. Come with me. Have another I sip. Try to, try to lead you off the uh, bridge. What about Wong? Don't worry about What about Wong? What, what's wrong with Wong? Look at him. And I'll kind of lead him around the corner so he can see Wong huddling in the corner, crying to himself for whatever he's doing. Wong, get yourself together, I slap you. Well, we have psychoanalysis. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nothing. Yeah. It will take some time. <laughs> Tom, Thomas, don't worry about Wong. He, he's, you know, he's weak. But listen, I, I, I'm disturbed that the captain didn't didn't even try to protect his ship when this junk hit us. I think, you know, a ship like this is an engine crew below decks and, and he would issue his command to go forward through a little speaker tube. We could just get ourselves our way down to the engine room and have a talk with the engine crew. Get underway at least. Get, a, get away from that. this yeah. this uh, this derelict out there. It's madness. All I need is a good drink and a couch, Jack. Let's just let's just get the hell out of here, huh? Everyone now. I mean, you all smell it, right? You all smell that really distinct smell. You can't place. At least some of you can't place it. For others, it's totally new. And you've been now under its effect for some time. And you all feel that wooziness, like, grabbing onto your brain. And you feel that your thoughts are sometimes directed to really absolutely not fitting thoughts or a train of thoughts. And everyone roll me a power roll here. Made it. Okay. Do we have a fail? My, my power is 90, and I failed with the 97. Oh, shit. That's a fumble, sir. <laughs> yes, no, it's not, it actually. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, what, what fail? Uh, if I okay. fail, man. Fumble uh, would be 100, I guess. Yeah. So Thomas, Wong, and uh, Francis, right? No. Oliver. Okay. No. Thomas, Oliver, and Wong, you failed. So yes. Wong, you, you just come out of your reverie, finally. And, I mean, you, you knew what you saw, and it's still bone-rattling to you. But, um, yeah, you managed to to get your brain to function again. But you and the other two as well, you look up to, to the sky, to the foggy horizon, which is not far away, of course. But it seems to be parting for you and giving you the view of where San Francisco should be. But there is absolutely nothing right now. It looks like 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 the moon like you would think the moon might look from close up craters and no vegetation absolutely nothing under a reddish sky where only seconds before it was dark and the stars were shining for a moment now it's red then san francisco is back it shifts over just starting with a few buildings as if they're growing up from the earth bigger buildings emerge in the middle and form the distinct yeah skyline of, uh, of uh, san francisco how you know it you look to the side and you see some weird big construction is forming over the the bay area it looks like a bridge, but you've never seen a bridge of that size. But as soon as it builds itself, it looks suddenly rusted and and as if it's covered by blood or something similar. It breaks down and the buildings, again, as you look over to San Francisco, rise up high and higher in the air. They seem to be entwined with each other. And it's just growing and growing. It looks so alien to you. But which look, what, what looks even alien, more alien to you is suddenly that great maw, which emerges from the dark red sky now. 
it's gigantic it's you would assume it's as big as san francisco itself you see huge teeth forming on the rim of its huge round mouth and it's digging itself its whole being into the city and you feel the earthquake under your feet and you're actually t you're you're toppling from your feet you're falling to the ground and suddenly the fog is back and everything is normal again but feel free to roll me sanity <laughs> the three of you thomas goes and hugs one uh, i just made my sanity exactly. mm -hmm. one point um what is my insanity i made mine by a few one point for you I as passed. well i passed okay one point for you as well sad <laughs> the other two you only saw that the three of them stood very transfixed staring into the fog for maybe a minute Hey guys, what just happened? What are you looking at? I don't know. <laughs> what did you see? You go, uh, uh, wrong way, wrong way. We have to turn back. Thomas, <laughs> uh, he, he just seems to be completely lost in a daze. Teeth, teeth, just huge teeth. Teeth, so it wasn't something that's was going to hit us then. It, it could eat us. Is that any better? <laughs> dragon, dragon eats San Francisco. Uh, like Wong, yes, Wong, excellent. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. like a like a a dragon. And there was a bridge, like 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 Wong said, though, like a London bridge, and then it was gone. It like deteriorated ground shake like like many years ago ground shake many buildings fall fires well <sighs> maybe you've like been standing in that smell for too long uh, this, this, something something's not right guys everyone roll the spot hidden Nothing. I have a hard success. A uh, regular success. Mm -hmm. I got oh, you're on me too. Success. Success okay. right on the money. Ew. Right on the money. Francis, yeah, while you're you're listening to these weird stories, you see a smaller shadow suddenly in the fog coming from behind the junk. I uh, pointed out to the rest. Look, there, something's, something's happening there. Uh, it's, it's, it's like my uncle Frank always says, we're not in Kansas anymore, fellas. I'm running toward the engine room. Okay. I would be following Jack. That's where I wanted to go anyway with him. So seeing mm -hmm. him run, I'm going to haul ass too. Okay something coming what are the other what are the others doing i like this corner. yeah i want to see what's going to happen okay. i like this corner i'm in it seems very safe from everything <laughs> so i'll stay in this corner <laughs> okay yeah you do um find the entrance uh, with jack's help because you would know the yeah you would know where you would have to look for the engine room and uh you enter there you see only two people there faces smeared with oil and such and yeah the those are probably the people working on the machines for sure. and it's silent down here we, we got to get these vengeance going guys 
something. Something's out there. Something's coming for us. Get underway. Well, what's coming for us? Uh, we have to wait for the captain to uh, give a go. The captain's dead. The captain's dead. We just need to go. What? Roll, uh, roll a fast talk. <laughs> Let's see. Um, that is a twenty-one. Normal success. Okay. And he looks at you, totally flabbergasted. The captain He's like, I don't know what the hell happened. He just fell over, but we need to go. There, there's uh, another that, boat. That, I, I don't know. That can't be true. And Another boat's heading for us. And the one, the one is like uh, as if he's frozen to his spot. The other one, though, rushes past you and pulls open the door and rushes up deck and the other three you hear fast footsteps as someone uh, is running up to the bridge the other one doesn't seem to be moving though is there a is this this is a steamship so there's a boiler uh is the is the water you know boiling we're making smoke and um I'm not actually sure if it should when you don't have the the engines going. To be honest, the it usually takes. I'm not sure about a small ship like this, but bigger ships take hours to heat up. So oh, great! When, when you don't, um, when you stop and you expect to be going again relatively quickly, you keep the boilers. Yeah, boiling then they. Low. Um, on the other hand, it, that does eat fuel. So if you're expected to be stopped for, you know, a day, you'd turn the boilers off. No, the they they didn't uh, hope for that. <laughs> no, the boiler is going then in that case. Okay, I'd like to try to figure out how to uh, engage the propeller then. Okay. Um, maybe directly in my experience, but tangentially. Yep. Do you have um what about what about operating heavy machinery? Sounds good. Good. Oh five. Oh wow. Yeah, <clears throat> you studied proper uh, probably <laughs> some plans before just out of interest. And yeah, you you would know how to how to do this. You think? All right, I'm going to try to engage the uh, the propellers. All heads forward. Uh, hold on, hold on. We 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 can't just go. We have to. We have to discuss who's who is in charge now. And you you see that the the other sailor or mechanic wants to get in your way. Um, do you want to try to shove him to the side, or you want to back up? Um. Yeah, I want to try to shove him toward Thomas. Okay. Give me Rolling. a brawl. <laughs> I think I slipped on a patch of oil. Yeah, and you're you're both going down actually in that <laughs> oil puddle as he tries to step in your way and he slips as well and you both land on your butt. Just tell me what to do, Frank. Or er, yeah, sorry, Jack. He just runs over to do whatever Jack tells him to do. <laughs> It's not that easy, Thomas. Push this button. Put right. <laughs> Do you push push a random button? If that's what he's pointing at, tell me not to push. <laughs> Do you point at something? I do not because it's harder than just pushing <laughs> a button. So I'm going to try to get up. Uh, you know, I think it's both. I'm I'm scrambling to get up and and run toward the um, machinery. Yeah, and he, and he tries to do the same. Be. Oh, come on, Jack. Quit dicking around. You got. Roll me a brawl. Oh Jesus. Okay. Yeah. What did you roll? I I took a swing at him as he got near, and I I whiffed it. Okay. Yeah. And and as he tries to get out of your fist range, again he struggles with a with a puddle under his feet, and he's slipping around. He doesn't fall now, but he just grabs one of the levers, which are pointing downwards and he stabilizes himself but he he's he's trying to be a nuisance for you definitely do you want to interfere in any way um thomas 
<laughs> or are you just watching? Well, yeah, I'm tired of Jack just messing around with this guy. I, I want to get the hell out of here. So I'd grab Jack and, you know, like by the cuff of his shirt or whatever he's wearing, just kind of try to drag him over to just tell me what to do, Jack. I'll push whatever buttons you want to push and levers and just let me know. <laughs> Thomas, keep that man from interfering. I'll just put my head down and charge this guy. Okay. <laughs> roll me roll. Let's see. Uh, definitely not. I got an 80 out of... Oh, hell no. Not even close. Yeah, I'm not much better. Um, well, he definitely tries to, or, or um, well, he's distracted, you, you would say, uh, Jack. Yeah, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, you know, just trying to... Goodness. Yeah, <laughs> the other three, you hear some screaming from below. I'm, you think I'm pulling okay. on her, Manly. I'm going to check um, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jack, you would think uh, maybe he's distracted enough now to right, activate to whatever you want the, to. The, the drive. Okay. Those pistons pumping. And finally, you hear that familiar sound as you activate the the engine again. Makes you probably pretty happy. And you see that sailor who's still, yeah, trying to keep uh, Thomas away from the engines and levers. He looks at you like he can't even, he doesn't even have, have words for this. He he steps back and he shakes his head. We, we, we can't just, just go on now. We, we, don't you understand? What are you talking about, son? You, we, 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 I mean, you're not in charge here, even if the captain is dead. And that's the moment when, when the other sailor or mechanic comes rushing down again together with, uh, with Francis. And he says that the captain isn't dead. What, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, maybe he just had a few too many drinks. He looked dead. But that's not point right now. We need to get out of here. What? 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 Your, why? Didn't Didn't you hear me? There's something gonna hit us. Yeah. What should What should hit us? Uh, that ship, which is just drifting there, and nothing happened. Something behind it. Go take a look. And can I um get him a shove or something? Get him out of the way. Give him a shove, push him. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Make sure that he's not interfering and. Uh, yep. Roll me a brawl. Yeah. Yeah, I run into a wall. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it looks like like the little fights before uh, Jack and and Thomas, they're slipping around in that in that oil on the ground and can't get a good footing, but they're well they're occupied. Did I read that right? That Oliver is on the ship, on the junk. Is he frozen? Oh, I think that's where he was headed. Here, I'm still on the. I'm I was on the ship, and I hear the the engine start to start to whir. But you were on the junk. On the junk. On the junk. Yeah, I had already climbed over, and I oh, was. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't uh, hear that. I'm very sorry. Yeah, let's go over to you for a moment. So, um, uh, when did you do that? Well, when everybody went inside, I stayed out here, and I was watching. I was watching the, the form that was coming from behind and I was debating in my head whether it was worth it or not to get on the junk ship. Oh, okay. I really, really want to, but I have a bad feeling about what's coming from behind. So with since no one was around, 
Um, I let my curiosity get the best of me and I crawled over and I haven't really made it inside, but I really want to go in and check out. Okay. What, yeah, you would Wong see saw. you would see that um it, it looks like a like another lifeboat maybe from the size you pick up through the fog is coming in the direction of of the junk. You still have some time though to look around if you want. So now that I now that I see that it's a lifeboat, I get kind of nervous and I start to look around kind of fast, like I'm looking to see if there's anything I can take, something small enough that I could conceal without everybody knowing, and maybe I could get back on the boat before this lifeboat comes around and I could warn the others. Um, are you looking for a weapon or are you looking for treasure or? I'm looking for anything, a memento, treasure, something that looks like it might be out of the ordinary even if it's even if it's something that's on the bodies of these um, do you go down, downstairs yes do you have a light as fast source as I, can. I do not so i'm working with whatever uh moonlight i can get and light light coming from the the light coming from the lifeboat yeah, so there's, there's, a, there's no... a little bit of illumination. Um, as you walk down the stairs, you see that there are some forms sitting around something. You're not sure because they are not sitting directly next to you to the stairwell or in front of the stairs. But uh, you have the description, of course, of um, low high. So you would know oh, this are possibly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start to feel around a little bit. Oh, goodness. Some of them. Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you feel some papery paper. Oh, she froze. Well, papery. suddenly and uh yeah you you feel some maybe dishes mugs and how how much time do you want to spend down there well is there a porthole that i could peek out real quick to see where the lifeboat the no. safety boat is no mm -mm. okay so i'm getting nervous now so i'm not going to spend any more time i'm just going to grab um one of these mugs and shove it in my jacket pocket and now this was I able to determine that this was a body? Probably, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna try to snap off one of the skulls, and I'm gonna make out for the. I'm gonna leave the uh, cabin. Okay, I'll give you one point of sanity loss for that because you don't <laughs> see them, and but it's 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 a weird, not so comfy <clears throat> adventure here. I'm very afraid. I'm very afraid to get caught too. Mm -hmm. And as you as you jump up the stairs and look to the right side again, where you saw that uh, shadow in the fog, you see it clearly now. There are five people in black clothing. You would think maybe robes or something like that. Their faces are covered in black as well. Looks like uh, like bandanas, you know, black bandanas over their nose, and uh -oh. they are very close to the ship now. They don't seem to be looking at you though. So I'm gonna glance at them, and then I'm gonna glance back towards the ship. Can I see anybody else? Is anyone else in my vision that I could maybe yell to, um, or, or run run towards? If not yell. Like Low eye is is sitting in a corner, so you wouldn't see him, and the others just took off to to Everyone's somewhere else. In the engine room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't see anybody. So I'm gonna I'm gonna real quick I'm gonna keep looking at the lifeboat at these robed figures, and I'm gonna hope that they don't see me get back onto the the ferry. Okay, do me uh, roll me a um a stealth. Oops. Uh, 
I failed. I <laughs> I failed. I slipped and tripped on a rope. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, you you just um uh, land on your butt the moment the first one climbs over the railing, and he looks at you and. Probably you almost expect that he's rushing for you to attack you or, or whatever because uh, why not, right? Well, what's... Well, it's, he's carrying yeah. a skull. What? He's carrying oh, yeah. a skull. True. <laughs> I've got but, it. I've got it. But he doesn't jacket. seem to be kind of too concerned. Out. He climbs over the railing. He keeps looking at you, but he just steps to the side and waves with one hand over the water and you see soon after the next one coming up and that's the moment when you hear suddenly the engines go off hmm. <laughs> what's your reaction <laughs> So how has he grabbed me yet? He's or he's no, just really close. No, no, he's he's just standing there. He's staring at you, and he waves the others to uh, at the others to to come up on deck as well. If it's a he, you're not sure. Okay, well I'm gonna start scooting, scurrying away, crap like I'm still on my butt, but I'm gonna start pushing away till I can get to a, a distance where I can stand up and not be. In risk of him grabbing me. Mm -hmm. No problem. He doesn't interfere with you in any way. And he steps to so the I'm side, and the next one comes up on deck. And the next. So I'm going to just keep my eyes on him and back up a little bit. And I'm going to put my hand down towards my side where I have my, my knife my pocket that I have my knife in it's not very big but it gives me a little bit of a sense of security uh -huh. do you I'm climb just gonna... sorry go ahead well no I'm not gonna climb I'm gonna stay so right now I'm, I'm imagining that I'm a little bit closer to one of the the bridge doors but I'm still on the bow of the ship probably on the starboard side and um okay. And I'm going to just try talking to him. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, what am I going to say? But just to, to say, be clear, uh, I understood it correctly that you're still standing on the junk, yeah? No. Okay, no, oh, good. Okay. Did I, not, did I not make it over? When I fell, I fell in the it, junk. No, you, you can make it over. I just wanted to be sure. Okay. Okay. I thought mm -hmm. I fell on the ferry. When I was getting out in the ferry trying oh, to be stealthy, okay. Okay. I fell. Um, yeah, what do you want to say? I'm going to say to them, Ahoy! Have you come to help us? And you see him make one step in your direction, and then another, but then he stays exactly there. And you see three of them now on deck, and they are just taking absolutely no notice of you of but they should see you but they walk directly downstairs under a deck so back to the others you you activated the engine what now we have a sailor down there with us right that's yeah two sailors that are uh two. giving us problems mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to look around for a. Uh, uh, I'm going to look around for a wrench, but I'm not going to actually pick it up. And you hear suddenly from from <clears throat> that speaker thing, like that, that um, yeah, speaking tube. tube. You hear suddenly, "What's going on there?" And that's clearly the captain. Hello. I've got my hands uh, not up like I'm surrendering, but up in a kind of let's calmly talk things over gesture toward the uh, sailors. Well, me a persuasion. 
Oh yeah, persuasion. It's gonna work very well. No. No? No persuasion. And they start shouting, Captain, the engine is going. Of course, he would have never guessed that, right? Yeah, and um, they shout, we, we, we can't get rid of them. What, what do we do now? And you hear shortly after the captain answering, is, is that other captain down there? And you see the one sailor look to you, Jack, and point at the at the tube. I oh I uh, I head over to the tube. I speak into it. What this is Jack say? Lucy. We, we we met shortly. Yeah, I know. What, what's going on down there? We're not supposed to move, you know that. I thought you you know it. Yeah, yeah, I heard you, but but when that when that ship hit your ship, you didn't do anything. Well, I can't help it. It it will be gone soon. Just wait. What about that other you. ship? What other ship? It was another one that I finally ran down here when when another ship came at us. Faster that, this time. A that boat. little lifeboat? I didn't. I don't know what it was. Uh, this you're place not is as long on the sea as I am. They're just picking it up. It will be gone soon, like I said. What are you talking about? Have you been on the bottle again? Picking what up? Do you ask him or do you shout? I would shout. And. He says, who's that now? Doesn't anybody know an author? Jeez. Thomas. Huh. Do you have enough for your story now? I would. They're picking up their wares, which are traveling through time and space. Satisfied now. So you meant to bring us here? Certainly not. But when the time is right, the stars align. Da -da -da -da. Sometimes we shift over into places we're not supposed to see. And this is what happened. And you just happen to be carrying their wares? The junk problem. is fellow friend the junk carries the wares they're not here for us we are just a coincidence all right by now i figure we've traveled um probably a few hundred yards so we should be clear of the junk um i will lower the throttle so we're just barely moving through the water okay let's go back to port oliver um you see that the boat starts or the boat uh the ferry starts moving slowly and um you see the people on deck of the of the junk they still don't seem to be really interested in what's going on aside from yeah their business on the ship and you see them walk below deck, like I said, and it doesn't take long, maybe 20 seconds, until they remove a large chest from the, from the cargo area and carry it up on deck. And they start, like, bringing it over into their little lifeboat-sized boat next to the uh, junk. And they still don't come do, closer to do you I or see something this? Do if I you see want this? to i shout that is your... mine <laughs> i'm gonna call and i'm gonna call wong over i'm gonna say wong look at look at this that's, mine. that's right. my treasure <laughs> it's a very intricate chest 
Okay. I'm gonna since curse myself since for not they, finding they that pulled, when I was... Yeah, since they pulled it out of the ship and there's doesn't have there's the dead bodies aren't there, I'm gonna go and try to get my chest. <laughs> okay. So you want to jump last moment over to the other ship? Yeah. Okay. So... I'm gonna come and back up. I'm gonna back up Wong. I'm gonna pull out my knife and say, Come on, Wong. Let's get this. Oh Jesus! Oh God! Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's stop these guys. These rogue figures. So, um, how how exactly do you want to do that? Do you want so, to? So um, I, I pull out my uh, the pendant I have and I show it to him that it's the same symbol and you know and I I shout at him that it's mine. They can't take it. They don't seem to care. <laughs> so you just jump over? Yeah. Okay, everybody roll me a jump. Who's jumping? I get my base 20%. It can mm -hmm. only go wrong. What could possibly go wrong? Go wrong. Oh yeah, I didn't make that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about you you did it? No. I got that, 11. No, but Oliver did it. Oliver, you see that um Wong kind of jumped with his wrong foot and you realize in that split second he will go down below the two ships but i have my lifesaver on you have your lifesaver on that's true <laughs> do you want to do anything i'm gonna reach i'm gonna turn my fo my focus is first on the, the rope guys with the chest and when i notice swung slip i'm gonna just lunge with my arm real quick and take my attention away from the rope guys and I'm gonna grasp and I'm gonna catch on to the rope that was tied to the lifesaver and start reeling it up don't worry Wong don't worry Wong I won't let you die okay yeah you splash into the water Wong and but you feel that that uh, rope immediately go taut and um, Oliver the people still don't react to you you see them uh, that how they lift up the chest and put it on the railing and they're about to well climb over in the boat again and shift it over um so you pull out poor low high from the water <coughs> i'm gonna pull him up and say come on come on we need to do this together no yeah problem. we're gonna you gotta go and try wrestle the chest from these people. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, let's go for a moment back down downstairs. Um, roll me. Although no, the machines are going. You you have no chance hearing this. <laughs> yeah. So you have a discussion with the captain. What's your What's your take on that? We have to get out of here, still. I'm sure of that. I say we keep going, Jack. Yeah. Just put that lever to 11. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, boys, all I care about is that we're underway and we don't drift. You're certain, certainly not drifting anymore. Captain, how about if we just go slowly? Well, I don't have a choice here. So I take what I can get in hopes of not disappearing in time and space. Can you see any lights up there? Any sign of the lighthouse? <laughs> and you, you you just hear laughter. All right. I will release the uh, my, my grip on the machine. We're, we're going at like the slowest speed it will go forward. Mm -hmm. um, And the, the, the sailors uh, seem to calm down now that the captain seemingly seems to be fine with it for the moment. 
but they look at you like glaring at you. You want to stay downstairs? I no well, I, I think no. I Let's huddle, guys. I think we need to stay down here. Or they're going to turn the engines back on. I mean, off. And one so. of them says, uh, well, the captain agreed, right? More or less. We don't interfere with the captain. Hint, hint. Let's go check on on uh, yeah, on Wong. Man. I forgot Wong. about Wong. He, he was pretty shaken up. Is everyone yeah. going? Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Yeah. Now yeah. you go back up um, to the side of your ferry, and you just see them like going into the fog on the junk. And they disappear into the white, white, <laughs> white fluffy mass. Knock it off, Wong! <laughs> you, you hear like a faint voice, give my treasure back! <laughs> oh yeah, and you definitely saw that they weren't alone on that ship, by the way. Yeah. Oh. All right. And we thought we left him crying in the corner. God damn, Wong. Where, where's that other fellow? The guy was who was skulking around. Oh, Which that's one? Yeah. the author you're talking the other about. Author? Oh, you saw him too. They were both on the other side. The self-proclaimed author. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you saw them both. All right. Lifeboats. Well, look, yeah. if we're getting ahead to anybody, we need Wong because he washes my suits quite well. But, you know, the other guy, you know, I don't want to try to get mixed up with them, so called. Yeah, authors. Francis, <laughs> you look fast on your feet. Get up there and tell the captain we've got men overboard. Get back down here and we'll get the lifeboats ready or a lifeboat ready. And just as you say that, you suddenly break out of the fog again. And for a moment, maybe you have that feeling of relief. Oh, yes, we left the fog. But then you see at the right side that friggin' junk again. You three <laughs> roll me sanity. <laughs> Made it. Okay, one point. Oh, I rolled a natural one. I don't know if that matters. Ooh. Well, that's good. <laughs> one point. But at least that's a success. Mm -hmm. uh, I succeeded too. So. Okay. One point. So it's is it as if we've kind kind of in a loop and we're we were moving away from it and you were yeah. you were kind of sure that you didn't do. Well, that you just drove straight ahead, uh -huh. kind of. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, guys. Let's get low. And you hear the captain. You hear the window open, being opened, and he shouts, "I told you, this doesn't help." <laughs> what do you suggest we do then? Turn off the engines. We have to wait. I'm over the side. Oh my god. We've been waiting all damn night. Yeah, you you uh Jack, you're you're working on the I'm around it. Oh sorry. Say again, Morgan. No. No the uh, Thomas. Thomas was talking, I think. Oh, that's you. Uh oh. Was he breaking up for you as well? Yeah. yeah. I'll just wrap up. We'll get back on it with one. 
Oh shit. We 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 don't hear anything actually. You're breaking up very badly. Some difficulties there. Um, yeah, Jack, uh, Jack, you were, yeah, <laughs> you were working on that uh, lifeboat. It's pretty easy to just um, turn the lever and the lifeboat goes over the railing and down into the water. I, I mean, it's supposed to be easy. And um, you just do it with, with two move of your hands and you have the lifeboat boat down in the water. And you hear suddenly the the captain screaming uh, not through the window anymore but it's still open you hear him shout stop the engines and just a few seconds later you hear the engines go silent again and you're more or less level to to the junk again maybe 20 yards uh to the side of you and uh let's go back to <laughs> To the two treasure hunters. Yeah, we're going to wrestle the chest away from them. Okay. <laughs> so two people are holding the chest. So one, one guy's on the one side, one guy's on the other side. So you so, want to so, just grab the chest? Yeah, grab the handles too and pull it our way, which is okay. two, two v fairy. Uh -huh. Whatever it takes one, let's get this. <laughs> okay, so you guys roll me a um, maneuver. Both of you. Okay. Oh my god, I got a uh, oh hard success. Just almost extreme, but hard success. Okay. What about Oliver? What is a maneuver? Uh, That's again? a brawl. That's just a brawl. Yeah, it's a brawl. Brawl. Okay. I failed. You failed. Um, Lohai, you, you managed to grab that um, handle from the chest and you just push the other guy to the side. You, you don't really know how you did this and where that courage comes oh, from. Pure greed. It's yeah, pure adrenaline-driven greed. <laughs> On the other side, though, um, Oliver doesn't seem to be that successful. Actually, both of them lose the grip on the on the chest and slowly although it is not happening slowly but to you it's kind of that disaster is happening very slowly in front of your eyes as the chest suddenly moves over the railing and is pulling on your arms. Oh, uh, I won't let it go overboard. No yeah, way. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> uh, give me a give me a strength. Okay, I, it's better than fifty fifty. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll burn two luck points. I want a hard <laughs> success though. Oh, a hard? Then forget oh, it. Yeah. I can't get a hard. You don't? Yeah, it's going in the drink with me. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, the chest plunges down into the water with a huge boof. And you see the water splashing like a fountain up behind the, the railing. Um, Lo Hai, you're pretty close to the chest and you follow it into the water. Lucky for you is that the chest just buries itself through the lifeboat those people were using and just breaks as it breaks it into a thousand pieces so you don't land head first into that wooden uh, boat so you just splash into the water and luckily with your um, with your lifesaver you don't uh, well go underwater at least not now um, this seems to be yeah well seems to be attracting some commotion between the other people you don't know of course around you and uh they they look at each other in total amazement oliver what are, what are you doing well um 
is Wong still standing there? Oh no, no he's in the water. He's in the water, and the chest just fell into the water as well, and and will be never seen again. Probably. Yeah, it probably went through the bottom of the boat. <laughs> I'm gonna yell to Wong. What should I do, Wong? <laughs> I'm trying to. Do you think we have a swim. chance? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm swimming. <laughs> do you do you swim around the boat to the ferry or? Yeah, to the ferry because mm. there's nothing. There's the uh, it's sunk to the bottom, right? So. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna it's start gonna swimming towards the ferry. down immediately. And okay, so um. Wong uh, seems like he's he's okay. I'm I'm not gonna try to save Wong, but I'm gonna look over to the. I'm gonna look over to the lifeboat. I'm gonna look at the robed men, and I'm gonna, before I j try to jump over onto the ferry, I'm gonna see what they're doing. They actually turn around as if, as if they got a command at the same time. They turn around and they just jump head first into the water. Not after a uh, low high, as you check the water again to see what they are doing. They just swim ahead straight into the fog. Oh wow! And this it, this water is really cold, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, what I want to do is swim after those guys, but I'm gonna <laughs> use a little bit <laughs> of better better judgment. I'm gonna go ahead and get back on the. Uh, I'm gonna try to get back onto the ferry. Uh, you, and if I'm successful, I'm going to go to the, the port side and try to watch where these guys are swimming. Yeah, no problem. You, you you watch for maybe 20 seconds, and then they're gone in the fog. But you see, as you look back, the ferry is about 20 yards um, to the side of, of you. So, well, you could swim over, but you see that Jack has already lowered a lifeboat to the water. Um... At the same moment, though, suddenly a, well, do you know, do you know those, um, if, or do you know how it looks when you start boiling water, when those bubbles slowly start yes. coming up, first one, then two, then ten, then hundred, that's exactly what's going on around your junk now. Okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump onto the the safety boat where the robed men were is that close enough that I could I can get on that right uh you want to do what sorry I want to get onto the boat where the robed men came from that boat is is smashed to pieces by the chest there is no boat oh. anymore that's why the people were swimming <laughs> okay okay you have no boat there anymore the only boat which is still in the water is the lifeboat uh, jack let down okay i'm gonna i'm gonna jump off the boat and i'm gonna start swimming towards wong i'm gonna say wait i see the lifeboat that's being lowered okay and uh what are you others doing you look down into the water and you see definitely those bubbles coming up from the water at a point between the ferry and the junk we can see uh wong swimming towards just too right yep can we lower one of those life-saving things? Yeah, no uh, problem. You throw one into the water. Grab a hold, Wong. Yeah, I'm wearing one, but if it's near me, I'll, I'll grab it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to Don't really... Don't forget run. me, I'm coming! Doggy paddling. <laughs> wait, wait! Don't worry about the author, guys. He's just a fake. <laughs> There'll be less competition, right? That's right. Yeah, you you can get back to the ship uh, in a minute. It doesn't take too long. But um, that uh. bubbling between the ships is increasing and increasing, and it's it's about probably thirty feet wide. This bubbling part of the sea, it's not warm. You don't have a feeling for those two in the water. You don't have a feeling that it's getting warmer where you are. But this is really a little bit um, unusual, maybe. 
Well, I'll, I'll pause for a second to wait for uh, Francis or Thomas to jump into the lifeboat. But if they don't come, I just start paddling it out to uh, to try to get Oliver or Wong if he's. Uh, you you uh, would realize saying. that they are faster at your lifeboat uh, than you would be able to to paddle over. So they already reached the lifeboat when you went down. So okay. you can help them into the lifeboat though, when yeah, they yeah. can All right. use the the winch to get you up again. Sounds good. Yeah, and you all are together on the ship again, and. You all, like, you all turn around because this phenomenon there is really, um, like I said, unusual. And you stare at that bubbling in the middle. And suddenly, something which can't describe as something other than a giant worm shoots out of the water. Maybe it's a tentacle? You're not sure at the moment, but it wraps itself around the junk with one big smashing sound, and it breaks it in two and just pulls it down into the water. You may roll me a sanity. I don't think that's a whale, guys. That was close. <laughs> Uh, success. Failure. So one point for success. Uh, then for you, Thomas, that's four points loss. Okay. I failed as well. Okay. I that's just eight. Oliver. Oliver just barely made it. Oh God. Good. Um, that's six five, five. points for you, um, Francis. Um, yes. Roll me an int roll. Oliver lost one, right? Yeah. Did you pass? Yeah. No. Nope. Okay. No. You managed to to just close your eyes and convince yourself for the moment that this couldn't be happening. This is absolutely not possible. There was no tentacle or worm wrapping itself around the junk, even though it's now gone. This can't be happening. There wasn't any junk to begin no. with. No. Oh. And the only re or what you now see after the junk just went below water, you only see a little bit of waves going on there. But then you see the fog closing in. And as it just closes in on you again, it suddenly just disperses in in two seconds. You can't blink. It's gone. And you see the stars at in the sky again shining down on your fairy. And it all seemed like a dream. Was that at all possible? And you hear from from the captain's window suddenly, now we can go. So it probably wasn't a dream. And shortly after the engines started again, and the ferry resumes its travel to San Francisco. How will be the rest of the evening for you guys? I ain't never drinking with Jack again. <laughs> You're not going to drink his alcohol again. <laughs> what just happened? I'm just standing by the railing, looking out with my mouth open to where that junk was, and just follow it with my eyes all the way the rest of the trip. And you're not even sure if the junk was exactly here. Or if you were exactly here when this happened. Well, oh, he might very have, confusing. might have a cup or a skull in his pocket. What, what, what Oliver, is it? Oliver's standing uh, 
kind of in shock. And then I come to, I'm like, oh. When I feel, I feel my jacket, I pat it on both sides. And, and the like, skull oh. is there. So it wasn't just a figment of my imagination. All I'm going to say out loud, I'm going to look next to me, and I'll see Wong there. I'm going to say, that was intense, Wong. That yeah. was intense. Wong, his teeth are chattering. He's cold, and he's dripping. <laughs> and he's wearing two oh. life preserve, two life <laughs> things, right? <laughs> two life savers. Yeah. Does anybody know uh, how late it is? What's the time? And I would I would grant you a check or a look on your watch or something before this happens. And it, does anyone have a watch or whatever? Well, we know when the ferry left, so that's true. As you arrive at the <laughs> at the pier again at that little, yeah, it's like a train station. You know, people yeah, have walk the, into that waiting area. area, and you see the clock and. The journey took exactly as long as you were expected it to take. Mm. Did it feel what? like it was longer? No, oh, it, it felt definitely longer, yeah. Like you had the journey plus that time you were right. somewhere else, kind of. Very, very, very uh, disturbing. If you would days later you read in the newspaper that there is a weird disease going on in the bay area every everywhere around like san francisco um um uh what do we say or oakland all that surrounding cities people start getting really really maniac they start seeing things like cities being being raised by giant giant gigantic monsters by tentacles coming from the sky and they print some some um interviews there when they talk to people who experience these visions and it reminds you the three of you who saw san francisco being attacked by that giant mouth it sounds very similar hmm. i'll search out long when we be back yeah. in here so I would do two things. One is meet these guys. The other one is visit my father's father's grave. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and hold on to that uh, pendant and sort of like burn some incense there and and uh, I go. Oh, don't know what this means, but something. It must be a message. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> And then I'll meet up with these guys to confer. Okay. Does anyone make a connection to to that disease? I think Thomas would be freaking out, just worried that he has it. You know, not sure, but you know, he'll totally have all the symptoms. He'll cough and you know, obviously probably fake, but he'll cough and gag and tell everybody he's feeling a little under the weather. He's not quite feeling right. I, I, I think we got this. This this madman, tentacle, dragon disease, Wong, Francis. I think we're all gonna die. Jeez. We had a I had a vision. I, I saw a dragon uh, eat San Francisco, cause earthquake, like nineteen oh six. Have you been coughing? <coughs> coughing too, Wang. Oh, that's from being in water in cold water. Oh. I think I got this disease. No. I think um, I try and track every one of those interviews and everything that's in the newspapers. Uh, start covering all the information uh, there is to find. Yeah, over the next few days you would find 
a lot of interesting interviews with people. Um, apparently, nobody knows what it is. Of course, a lot of people claim it's this and that and whatever. But you kind of know this is uh, maybe connected to whatever happened to you. Sounded a little bit too similar. And that's where we stop for today. <laughs> Thanks, <Okay>. guys, for playing. <laughs> well, I just want to give one last one outro for yes, all of Yes, please. Us. Go ahead. Um, it's a few days later. This is in the morning when all these reports are coming in, and I'm just sitting in my study trying to write, and I, nothing is coming to me, but I keep staring at the skull across in my study as I'm coughing. And I, and I just, Oliver's just going to contact the few family that he has in Oakland and see if they're going maniacal. Well, to begin describing really weird stuff to you, and uh, I don't know if you, if you call them or send a letter, but what you get back in whatever way uh you you contact them contacted them they sound so crazy and you never seen them like that before and they're absolutely sure of what they're talking it is absolutely real now i'm freaking out and so i'm back in my study and i'm looking at the skull again transfixed and i just start getting flashes in my head of that image of that i saw with san francisco and the teeth and the big mass it's coming and i say to you. myself we really shook the pillars of heaven wang <laughs> <laughs> that's entirely possible okay any any more last words no okay and i'll end the broadcast here and we do some character development yeah like i said thanks for playing Thank you.